Recyclico, making lithium ion last forever. Recyclico's patented recycling process achieves up to 100% recovery of battery metals from lithium ion batteries for electric vehicles, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, and aluminum. Recyclico Battery Materials Incorporated trades on the TSX Venture AMY, on the OTCQB AMYZF, and Frankfurt ID4. For more information, visit Recyclicode.com or phone us at 778-574-4444. Recyclico, making lithium ion last forever. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Mark Leibovit, editor and publisher of the Leibovit VR Newsletters, also known as VRTrader.com. He's speaking to us from Arizona. Welcome back to the show. Glad to be here, Jim. Thanks for having me. Do we have a special offer for our listeners? Yes, for new subscribers, go to VRTrader.com. That's VR is Victor Robert and stands for Volume Reversal. That's where we got it from decades ago. And uh, even though we use a bunch of other indicators including cycles but a lot of my trades are all based on volume shifts so uh, if you want a discount for new subscribers 2022 half off is the promo code and you just enter that in the promo code slot for whatever newsletter you decide or for whatever time frame you decide Mm -hmm. and i generally make the same disclosure uh for regulatory reasons i'm not a financial advisor nor do i provide financial advice in other words i'm not managing money i'm just uh reporting the news and talking about the markets and my opinions and, you know, putting up names that I think might be of interest to uh, investors and uh, having a lot of fun doing it. How would you describe what's happening on the stock markets? It is crazy, crazy day. I mean, we came in short today and, um, you know, you look really smart because uh, the Dow was off and the S the uh NASDAQ was really off, about 364 points. The Dow held up a little bit. Uh, but the interesting divergence uh, was, you know, if you're technically oriented as I am, you know, you're looking at the various indices and confirmations and non-confirmations. And one that popped up today, which has been a laggard, was the Dow transportation average, which was up strong. But if you look at the chart, it's been in a downtrend for weeks and weeks and weeks. So it was like a one-day pop. Uh, to the upside in an overall downtrend. So I don't know how meaningful that is or not, but the Dow Transports, uh, you know, Charles Dow created this confirmation, non-confirmation theory decades ago, probably a hundred years ago or more. I'm sure it was more than a hundred years ago. And, uh, you know, the theory is that you want to see the Dow Transports utilities and industrials, you know, in sync. And if they're not confirming each other, then you get what is known as a divergence. So the, even though uh, the market, it's basically manipulated by two or three or four stocks. We know that, a handful of stocks. But that aside, you know, the transports has been underperforming. Well, the S&P or the Dow were going up, and that's a no-no. That means there's an internal divergence in the market, or maybe the transports are telling you something. Maybe business isn't as good as people thought. If they're not shipping stuff and they're not using transportation, that means probably business is slow and uh, the indices may be going up on false, you know, expectations and or manipulation or both. So uh, so with the Dow Transport's up today, the other index is down and particularly the high flyers had a one-day hit and we don't know if it's going to continue or not. You know, NVIDIA, an Apple computer, for example, even Tesla, which we had to run the last few days. Uh, I mean, I'm in the bear camp. I mean, I'm telling you straight. I think this hurricane season, <laughs> to put it in as a generic uh, uh, definition, has it, we've entered that, and I'm looking for surprises to the downside, perhaps even dramatic surprises in the weeks or, you know, months ahead here. So, and you don't have to be a genius to see the divergences in the market and know it's only a certain stocks, handful of stocks that are driving the indexes up. But you know, I've been a, I've been doing this for decades and I'm more of a trader and I'm more looking for individual things to trade. You know, I'm not a investor where I sit there and hold the S&P 500 or the Dow or the NASDAQ. That's not my strategy. You know, I've been doing this. I pick uh, individual stocks or maybe ETFs in a sector, let's say a Bitcoin or crypto that I like. And I trade this stuff. So 
that's why we're VR traders. So I'm, I'm, I'm always imp- employing guerrilla t- tactics to the market, in and out, in and out, take the trade. And it comes from my floor trading experience where, you know, my people that taught me, uh, told the story many times, you know, came in the morning flat, took a position, traded out of it, went home with no position and started every day fresh. And they, they viewed it as a way of making a living, a paycheck every day. And I, I'm going back now decades where I saw these guys doing it and it made a lot of sense because you don't have to worry about waking up in the morning and the market's up or down big and it's in the wrong direction from where you're at. So, you know, if you're just a long-term investor and you're just comfortable holding the S&P and the Dow, you know, on a multi-decade basis, you shouldn't even be listening to this broadcast. You should just be holding your stocks. Ultimately, you know, they go up. There's big volatility in over 100 uh, plus years. You know, if you look at a chart, it's just a, a, you know, right angle, left bottom to top right of your chart up with some zigzags along the way. But if you're, you know, looking for action in the market or you want to anticipate or prevent any uh, uh, significant declines in your portfolio, you look to someone like myself who says, well, I think the market's too high and you got to be careful or get out and or, you know, we took a trade in Tesla the other day. We put a chart up, you know, it was breaking out. Everybody got excited, but we saw it coming on the breakout, for example, you know, and uh, we sold Costco before it had a, actually was down 30 or 40 points today. We got out of that the other day, you know, Apple, we sold, uh, you know, it just ran up too fast and it was a trade and we've been that for a few days, uh, um, you know, uh, Generac, which makes the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, generators. So we took a trade in that thing, you know, and on and on and on. So even Dutch Brothers, which I like, we took a trade in. So I'm just saying we're just trading stuff, and uh, uh, that's uh, that's the way I work. work. And the, the market today, again, a lot of divergences going all different directions. Uh, the bulls are all excited about the so-called summer rally. Uh, I'm not so excited about that. It's temporary anyway. We're going to generally sell off into the fall as we do in that September, October period where you might get a market crash. Not always, but you could. You know, you got so much political cross currents going on now. I put, you know, it's probably disrespectful, but that's just me. You know, I put up a picture of the three stooges, um, Mo Larry and Curly on my website this morning. Comparing them to uh, Senator Schumer, um, our, our Ukrainian uh, President Zelensky, and um, let's see who was else uh, in that picture. Um, let's see one of the um, one of the other you know congressional people that were walking alongside him. You know, as he's trying to get more money being sent to Ukraine. Well, you know, I put that up. Why? Because the big story is NATO, and we're not really talking about that. And I know it's not a political broadcast, but uh, from what I understood, the entire Ukrainian war could have been avoided if we just appeased Putin and just said no NATO for Ukraine, which is what he wanted. And now they're going to push for NATO, and that just gets us closer to an increased World War Three situation. And these people are just pushing and pushing and pushing the buttons on Putin. And, uh, you know, I've been saying for months and months and months, you know, the big story is war, 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 and it's not the Fed, Fed, Fed. And uh, there's bigger things going on. And you got uh, Putin meeting with China every 10 minutes, and we've got North Korea going on. And we're not even talking about geocosmic and other events out there. And we got the U.S. election, you know, all kinds of stories that Michelle Obama uh, is not is going to take the place of Biden, and whether that's true or not, and I can I don't want to get into the story about her because I posted it on my website about her true background. You'd have to go to my website to see it. I don't want this broadcast to be edited or uh, con- condemned. So, uh, you know, the bottom line is so much could happen. You know, political uh, tension, sa- assassination risk all kinds of stuff out there and i'm just uh thinking you're in a very treacherous dangerous uh time frame you got potential civil unrest you've got all kinds of stuff going on and uh you know uh, i guess you know a good place for me is uh, trading them day to day uh trying to make a buck as we did a little bit on the short side today uh not big but a little and uh you know hedging yourself maybe with treasury bills or other situations where you don't have risk and just you know keeping a lower lower profile so um 
just love and sanity going out there like we got the Hollywood stars. <laughs> oh, boy, you know, they like Biden. They don't like Biden. They like Trump. They don't like Trump. These people are in no position to make political comments to begin with. And that's all over the news about, I don't want to mention the particular names, and I'm just sitting here laughing, you know, what's really going on. So you got a crazy market, overdone to the upside, too exuberant, uh, too many risks under the market, and um, I think, you know, we have a black swan coming of some kind. And, uh, you know, you come in one day and it's down 1,000, 2,000 points, you wonder, why did they pull the rug under this market? It looks so good. You know, the video was doing great and Apple was doing great. How can they do that to me? How can they break the market a thousand, two thousand points on me? Well, you're going to see it. We'll have more with Mark Leibovit right after this. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Mark Leibovit. Mark, what's going on with gold? I'm uh, doing well. It's moving higher. Uh, you know, I have a mixed feeling about it. I mean, very bullish overall. It's just that, you know, I'm always looking over my back to see what could go wrong. That You know, suddenly, is it going to really break out here? Some shares have broken out. Gold itself hasn't broken out yet, though it's close. Uh, it's looking good. But there's also chart patterns that say you could double top here and come all the way back down again to $300 an ounce and then go up again. So we had some hedges on, some inverse ETFs to protect the position. We took those off a couple of days ago, which was good since the, the market went up. And I'm just sitting here holding my breath and keeping my fingers crossed because, you know, it, it seems too easy that gold just going to continue to run here, though overall I think it's going to go up. So. You know, my opinion on gold is it's just another trading vehicle. I'm not in the, uh, as I mentioned a few moments ago, but owning the Dow and the S&P and owning this stuff and putting it away forever, that's not me. Yeah, I got a few coins in the safe deposit box, but uh, I'm more of a trader and I more trade the ETFs like Central Fund of Canada, which is the Sprott, Sprott Fund now, which is about 50% gold and silver, you know, stuff like that, that you have instant liquidity and you're not paying huge premiums to buy and sell gold and silver, which you have to do if you do the physical. So, um, you know, I'm just, um, you know, I know at some point you, I'm going to wish that I had a whole box full of coins, you know, when the uh, so-called revolution comes or civil unrest comes or the, the economy collapses and you wish you had a bunch of gold and silver coins around to survive. I guess I should prepare for that, but I'm not in that camp. I just see it as another investment trading vehicle we've seen you know since the 1970s and 80s the tremendous volatility in gold you know and uh i'm not sitting there you know like i own a few coins just because they're pretty but i'm not in the buy and hold you know stockpile on my trade them and uh i guess uh, i may regret one day not having more of them if there was a crisis but in any event uh, uh that's where you know that's where we're at it, it's it's hanging in there some of the shares are acting well finally a lot of the shares um were um you not following the goal they were lagging and there was a divergence and some of that has changed now with the shares starting to break out like uh a ticker symbol au and aem for example last one aem is agnigo eagle some of these starting to move a little bit so it's looking encouraging i have a 2700 hundred dollar target which i mentioned but i don't know when you know, I don't know if it's this year or next year and whether it comes from $200 lower or it comes from here. So as a result of that, we're keeping a core position of the gold shares and gold in the portfolio and keeping my fingers crossed that we don't get that shakeout. But if we get a clear sell, sell signal or reversal pattern, I'll sell them all and go to cash and wait for another buy opportunity. What's going on with crude? Inching up higher, around $83. Uh, you know, I'm a bull overall. I mean, I'm looking for $190 a barrel the next year or two or three. So, uh, and you got smart people, uh, I keep mentioning his name, Warren Buffett, you know, buying Occidental Petroleum, huge position in it. So, and a lot of smart people are buying energy stocks. So, uh, I think, you know, it's, it's like in the gold and silver thing. It's something you believe in and you stick with. And, um, you know, I, I think overall, if there's any kind of geopolitical issues, it should be more positive for oil. So, uh, 
I'm not looking for any shakeout. I'm uh, I'm in there. What's going on with uranium? Up ticked uh, here a little bit, and we saw a breakout in a couple of the names like Cameco and U- ticker symbol URA, which is the uh, ETF. So you know, uranium is still you know a, a core position, particularly in uh, with geopolitical uh, risks. And we know uh, you know we stopped selling uh, uranium to uh, Russia and all kinds of cool stuff. So there's, uh, there's demand for it. It's 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 like oil, you know, it's a, it's a base commodity that uh, is needed for, you know, the space, space exploration, for, for military defense, and, uh, and it's been upticking here for the last, uh, you know, couple of years slowly, so uh, it's, it's a core position, it's, you know, if, if no other reasons, uh, military reasons, and hopefully, uh, you know, the, um, the need to str- strengthen the grid, the electrical grid is going to need nuclear energy, so uh, uh, you just got to stick with core names. I guess if you had to hold one, it would be the big Canadian-U.S. name, Cameco CCJ, and uh, that's been holding up and moving zigzag higher here for months and months. So follow the chart, which still says it's positive. What's going on with the cryptos? Well, that's been the big exciting story. We talked about this last week, um, and you know, the story you know goes back to Mount Gox, you know, the fraud that occurred back in 2000, was it 11, 12, 13? I forget the date back there where, you know, that was your vehicle to buy Bitcoin, you know, and this was like your um, your trading platform, the way Coinbase or Uphold or the, like two names of, out there that you use to execute your buys in Bitcoin. This doesn't include, you know, wallets and storage. This is sort of your platform where if you like to, Take positions. Well, Mount Gox, I believe, was the first out there, or one of the first, and uh, it went under. And a lot of people on paper, you know, lost a lot of money. And now uh, I wasn't aware that this was still in process as much as it is. But there's a, a trustee out there, and they've been trying to pay back the losses from over a decade ago. And uh, by doing that, and I don't know the mechanics. I'm not a you know Bitcoin trader. I'm a Bitcoin ETF player. You know more than anything else. Um, but apparently that depressed the market because somehow they have to go in there and repay the investors in, in this bankruptcy, and that that puts pressure on Bitcoin itself somehow. And again, I, I can't de- delineate the exact uh, mechanics of how this is happening, but the fact that the uh, trustee is out there and that put pressure on Bitcoin, and when that took took a 20% nosedive, it took down all the other cryptos with it, and the question is, is the correction behind us now? And we already saw the little shakeout because we saw crypto, not, I'm sorry, not crypto, but Bitcoin basically drop from the double top around that 73,000 area down to about 54,000. So we had about a $20,000 decline in um, Bitcoin itself. And, you know, the charts, you know, look better because we had a correction, but it didn't necessarily confirm the bottom. So I'm not sure. I mean, I, I think it's overall bullish just like you could say gold's overall bullish but i'm not sure if the correction's out of the way or not so um i'm a i'm a bull overall uh the charts uh look healthier because we had a shakeout but it, you know, and ethereum is holding up a little bit better because apparently there's an etf uh, approvals coming down the road here sooner rather than later and that's going to help you know, ET, um, you know, Ethereum itself, as the ETF gets approved, the way the Bitcoin ETF got approved, it helps uh, put buy pressure on the Ethereum itself. So that's sort of pending. Um, so, you know, the fact that we had a 20% shakeout in it, I guess I'm constructive. I mean, I guess it could drop, uh, that referring to Bitcoin, maybe into the 45,000 area if it really wanted to break again. Uh, so that's sort of your risk here. But, I'm, you know, I like it. I like it more since you had to shake out. You know, we jumped in and uh, holding our breath. On the geocosmic front, anything we have to pay attention to? Yeah, we have, you know, some solar activities going on again. And, um, again, I'm not a um, geophysicist or anything like that, uh, but basically there's this ongoing um, sunspot problem, and it keeps rotating around the sun and it's really fascinating if you're into the science of this thing um they're expecting some minor geomagnetic storms uh july 13th 14th um when they say a stream of solar wind is expected to hit earth's magnetic field 
But the interesting thing that's been going on here uh, is that you know there's a, basically some type of uh, superstorm underway, and uh, it's uh, you know it's, it's it's affecting our satellites and so forth, and could affect them further. And it's interesting. There's this you know again big sunspot or group of them that keeps rotating around the sun, and I just follow this on spaceweather.com and it's fascinating because you know the power of one of these things could shut down planet earth <laughs> really fast and you know nobody's sitting there worrying about it and i guess you can't do anything about it anyway but you know we keep laughing about that carrington event back in uh, the mid 19th century and uh, we came close to one just a few weeks ago so you know uh, something going on, and the uh, solar activity has been uh, on an uptrend. So if this thing will, takes off, we've already seen you know the auroras and all kinds of fun stuff here in the last few weeks. But if a serious one really hits, um, planet Earth in trouble, you know, in terms of our technology and something even possibly more severe. So we hope that's not the case. And just by watching it is not going to change anything. But there's stuff definitely going on up there. So anyways, a lot of geomagnetic storm activity and solar stuff going on up there and that's you know really interesting to see how it all pans out we all hope it doesn't happen mark thank you so much for chatting with us love it have a great weekend thanks for interviewing me my guest has been mark Liebovit, editor and publisher of the Liebovit vr newsletters also known as vrtrader.com if you have any questions for mark or for any of our guests you can send them to info at howstreet.com our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on X at House Street. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.